crafter square leather at Dollar Tree. I know this isn't anything new and I'm a bit late to the leather party, but boy oh boy, do I have some hacks for you using this that don't involve using the Cricut. You are not gonna wanna miss this. Hey everybody, welcome back to Kelly Barlow Creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, Thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose, mm-hmm, in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links you guessed it, in the description box below. So what do I have going on for you for today? Well, today I am bringing to you some DIY hacks using this here leather that you can get at Dollar Tree. It's by Crafter Square. Love this stuff. It comes in several different colors. I know that I am a little bit late to the leather party, jumping on that bandwagon a little late, but these hacks are hacks you are not gonna wanna miss because I repeat, you do not need a Cricut for these hacks. These are hacks that anybody can do and I think you're absolutely gonna love them. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it and let me show you what you can do with this here leather. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll wanna stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. These are the four colors the only four colors that I've found by Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. They're gonna work and I've got some amazing hacks for you using them. I'm gonna start off with the brown leather. I'm folding it in half long ways. Now this is a scrap piece of leather that I had in my stash. Once I folded it in half, I'm gonna cut in about an inch and a quarter and I'm gonna cut a strip, the length of the leather. What I'm doing may look a bit familiar I did do something very similar to this in a recent mystery box challenge DIY, but I assure you there is more to this leather hack than just this. I'm gonna take that strip, I'm gonna fold it in half, and I'm gonna glue those ends together just like you see me doing here. You'll see that there's two ends. There's this end here and the end where we glued the two sides together on this end here. I'm going to cut slits down the length of this leather strip and I'm only going to cut it about halfway through the strip there, not going all the way down, keeping those slits attached. There's no measuring involved in cutting the slits. You're just going to try and evenly space them. And if you don't, no worries. It'll just add to the character of this. Once I've got those slits cut, you see what I'm doing. I'm rolling my leather strip that has slits in it. Now, every now and again, as I roll it, I'm gonna put just a bit of hot glue there. This is gonna keep it from unrolling and it's gonna help keep its shape so it doesn't slip as we roll it or once we're done rolling it. And this here is what you will be left with. Pretty cool looking, right? Where am I going with this? Well, you'll see. I've cut another strip with the white leather. Now this one I made a bit bigger. I wanna say that this one is about an inch and a half wide. I'm not gonna fold this one over. This one I'm just simply going to cut slits in. Again, not going all the way through the strip, just enough to keep all these slits attached. You will see on your leather that you've got the good side of leather, which is the leather, and then you've got the rough side, which feels like a fabric side. On the good side of the leather, there at the corner, I'm gonna put just a dot of hot glue, and again, this is the good side. I'm gonna take my center, and I am going to glue the white strip just like so, adding on to the center of the brown leather there. Now, this is going to be a flower, so this is an easy way that you can make flowers either with fabric, with paper, with crepe paper, but with leather, it gives it such a fun, cool look, and it is so budget-friendly to do. You can do these in any size. Some of you may ask, how long were the strips that you cut? I just cut the strips the length of the leather itself, and so I wanna say that some of them may be 48 inches, some of them may be 18, 
it really is gonna be dependent on how full you want your flower to be. You can add extra strips to what I'm adding here just to make your flower bigger and fuller. And so I think it's one of those hacks and DIYs that you can really have fun with and get creative with. Leather, which means it's gonna be easy to shape. I want my flower to be just a bit more open. So just by kind of opening it up and forming the flower, just like you see me do in here, it's gonna open my flower up and look at how beautiful that is. What a fun piece, right? My flower needs leaves though. I don't have green leather, but this scrap brown leather is gonna work just fine. I went ahead and kind of freehanded the shape of a leaf and the size that I wanted it. Once I did the first one, I wanted my leaves to be the same. So an easy way to do that is once you've done one leaf, just take that leaf, trace it, and now you've got two matching leaves. These leaves, I'm just gonna glue them to the bottom of my leather flower. And would you look there? We've just made an amazing looking leather flower. How fun is that? Next up, this one is gonna take you all of five minutes to do, and it is a great hack using those scrap pieces of leather that you may have laying around that you think you can't do anything with. Well, this is what you can do with them. On the back side of that scrap piece of leather that I'm not throwing out, that I'm utilizing, yep, I'm gonna trace a paper tag. This is a tag I had in my stash that I typically use for my tiered trays, but I thought how fun would it be to make a leather tag and personalize it. I love the look of leather. It kind of gives it that aged 20s distressed look, I feel like. And so, yeah, I am. I went in with my rotary cutter and a ruler. Ask me why I didn't use scissors. I don't know. I think because I probably already had this out, but I guess my tag's gonna be extra straight, right? Because this is a tag, it needs a hole, right? So I'm just gonna take a simple hole punch and punch a hole in leather. Yeah, you can do that. Look at that, isn't that cool? How fun is that? And of course, because it's a tag again, it needs a string, but not just any string, it needs a twine string. Of course, just to add to the rustic feel of it. You can personalize this a couple different ways, one of which would be using a Sharpie marker. If you've got some really great writing, you can go ahead and personalize this leather tag that way. If you've got a Cricut, you can cut out some vinyl and vinyl sticks perfect to this leather. And it doesn't need to be heat transfer vinyl. It can be just a regular premium permanent vinyl and it'll stick perfectly to this. I use the Sharpie route and look at how fun that is. I love these. I made a bunch of these with my scraps and this is definitely what I'm gonna be putting on my gift bags. For this next one, I went on to Google Image Search and I searched for a bow cutout. I wanted a template. This is one that I found in the search, super easy. I'm gonna go ahead and save this to my computer. Once I've saved it to my computer, I can then go ahead and print it out. And this is what I printed out here. Perfect, right? It's a bow template. I love this. If you've got a Cricut, you can do that too. I printed it out in a couple of different sizes just by resizing my image, you can do that. On the back side of my leather, I'm gonna take my templates that I have cut out and I'm gonna trace them. Now for one bow, there are three pieces that are needed. So you're gonna wanna do this part is the bow itself. Then you've got, I guess, what would be the ties to the bow. And that's this piece here. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and trace that piece out too. Then you've got your center piece that actually holds the bow together and that would be the third piece. Putting these bows together, it's gonna take all of maybe a minute. You'll see that there's tabs on each side of the bow. On the back side, you're gonna wanna put just a dot of glue, fold it over to the center, and on the back side there where those tabs meet, go ahead and put a dot of glue there and you're gonna glue what would be the bow part to what I'm gonna call the tails of your bow. Then you've got this piece here left. This is what you're gonna wrap around the center of your bow, hiding everything that you glued together. 
While I was at Dollar Tree, I went ahead and picked up these snap clips. You're getting 10 for $1.25. On the front of that snap clip, I'm just gonna go ahead and outline it with some hot glue. Then I'm gonna take my bow and place this snap clip face down onto the back side of my bow, which then in turn is giving me a bow for hair, or in my case, a bow for Winnie. When gluing that clip on, you really wanna do it while it's open so you can open and close it and you don't glue it closed. If Winnie's got a bow for her hair, I can't leave Biza out, right? And so I figured I'd make Biza a bow tie. So again, just by resizing my image, my picture, and making it a bit bigger, I can make a bigger bow. I want to say that this bow, the blue part there that you see that's already on my table, is six inches long. And I felt like that was going to be a good size for a bow tie for Biza's neck. And just as I did with Winnie's bow, I'm going to put this together the same way. It's just a larger size. Now when doing this, don't worry too much about the center if there's an overlap there when you flip it over because that one rectangular piece that you wrap around the center of your bow once you've glued the two pieces together is gonna cover up any uneven parts there in the center. An alternative to the clip would be using an elastic rubber band, one of those smaller ones that comes, I wanna say in a thousand pack at the Dollar Tree. You would add that to the center before you actually wrap that finishing piece off there in the middle of your bow. I actually really like the clips. I find that they don't tug on the dog's fur as much and they're easier to put on and off. And so this is the route I'm gonna go, but if you're doing this say for a craft fair, it might be a bit more budget friendly to go the route of the elastic rubber bands. And there we have our handsome Beza boy with his bow tie. He just got groomed. I love him, look at how cute he is. For this next leather hack, I cut a 15 inch strip of leather and it's about two inches wide. I'm gonna hot glue both sides, meeting them in the middle. While the glue is hot, if you take and run your fingers along that strip, it's gonna smooth it out nicely. So you should be left with this. I am making another bow for this. Wait until you see where I am going with this DIY. It is so easy and so budget friendly with an outcome that is amazing. This is another one that you can sell that I think people would absolutely love. For this hack, you're gonna need some elastic. Dollar Tree sells elastic now by Crafter Square. I just dug into my mask stash from COVID because I had so much. To this 15 inch piece of leather, I added a five inch piece of elastic and that is going to give you a medium size headband. If you wanna do a small headband, you're gonna wanna cut about an inch to an inch and a half off of your elastic, which would give you about three and a half inch piece. For a large, I would go with a six inch piece. So for a small, I'd go with three, three and a half inches. For a medium, I would go with a five inch piece of elastic. And for a large, go with a six inch piece. Then just by gluing a bow, offsetting it there, you have just now made an adorable headband. Quick, easy, budget friendly, and the outcome is adorable. For this next DIY, it is another hack that is perfect for those scraps. You can see I'm just taking this piece off of the blue here. To this rectangular piece, long ways, I'm gonna cut slits in it. I'm not gonna cut the slits all the way up. I'm gonna go just about an inch from the top there to an inch and a quarter, and I'm gonna cut slits the whole length, width, width, because I'm cutting length. So the whole width of this scrap piece of blue leather. Diving on into that white leather, this piece here that would otherwise be a scrap, I'm gonna utilize it and I'm gonna cut a small strip here. Now this strip of white leather is gonna be about the same width as the slits that I cut in the blue leather there. I'm gonna take and hot glue the bad ends together, which is going to now leave the good side of the leather on the outside. On the bottom piece there, I'm gonna place just a bit of hot glue and I'm gonna hot glue this white loop to the bad side of my blue leather. Then I'm going to roll 
my leather. Now, when I glued that white piece, I glued it to the top part of the blue leather that didn't have the slits in it because we cut our slits just about an inch to an inch and a half from the top of the leather there. I'm gonna dive back into that white leather and I'm gonna cut another strip that's just a bit wider, but not quite as long because I wanted to add a decorative strip to the top of the blue here, just kind of breaking up the blue and tying in the white loop that we have there. What am I making? I am making a keychain holder. How fun is that? Another great thing that you can do using those scrap pieces so you are really utilizing the most of that leather that you've bought. Easy, right? A tassel. Doesn't get any easier than that. Perfect way to utilize those scraps. Guess what? Dollar Tree now has these key rings. You're getting 10 for $1.25. So just by slipping it onto that white hoop up there, we've just made a keychain. Did I say? Out of our scraps, utilizing all the pieces of our leather, getting the most out of that 48 inch roll of leather that we bought for $1.25 at Dollar Tree. This last hack that I have for you is gonna take you all of five minutes to do not one, but four if you wanted to, or even more using these napkin ring holders that you can get at Dollar Tree in the wedding section, these ones are. They've got a bit of twine on them that I went ahead and removed. Taking my cutter, because I wanted nice straight lines, I cut a one inch strip of the black leather. One inch strip is what will fit perfectly on these napkin rings, covering up the silver just by placing a bit of hot glue there. I'm gonna wrap this leather around it. Mm -hmm. Look at that, just totally changing the look of this that easily. Now think about it, you buy a set of four of these, wrap these in leather, do you know how many of these napkin rings you can make with one roll of leather? What a great item for a craft fair. Once you've got it glued around the entire napkin ring, you wanna cover up that seam there. To cover up the seam, I thought what better embellishment than to use these wood embellishments that Dollar Tree carries now. This leather one is adorable, so just by placing a bit of hot glue on it, right like so, placing it on the seam, we have now made a seamless napkin holder. I love that. Look at how awesome that is. You get a lot of wood embellishments in that pack, which would make a lot of napkin ring embellishments. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Robin, who is bringing to us her recreation of my rustic wood family that I made. Robin, I am loving your spin and your twist on this using the Jenga blocks. And you made this work by using some of those, I want to say boxes, the round boxes, the gift boxes, a Dollar Tree. I am loving your ingenuity with this. Thank you, Robin, for sharing your recreation with us today. What's great about these DIYs are they are pieces that are quick, easy, budget friendly that you can make and sell at a craft fair. And I am all for doing that. I am all for encouraging entrepreneurs to get out there and be your own boss. And so if I can bring you some DIY hacks to help you do that, I'm all for it. I hope you all enjoy today's DIY hacks using this inexpensive leather at Dollar Tree. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes. Because like I always say, and I know, I know, I know, I sound like a broken record, but it's true and this record is gonna keep on playing. Each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below, well, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive, please, and bye for now, everybody.